All right. Good morning, church. So good to see everyone this morning on this cold and snowy day. But thank you guys so much for joining us in person. And also, uh, we want to extend a warm welcome to those of us joining us online as well. Let's all rise together to our feet. And would you join me in a word of prayer as we prepare our hearts uh, to worship our King this morning? Gracious God, we come before you. And we are delighted that we're able to come together whether it's in person or online, uh, to worship your holy name. But Lord, would you uh, just pour out your spirit upon each and every one of us as we freely worship you, God. May you be lifted high. May you be exalted. And help us to just fix our eyes upon you and you alone during this hour that we have together. So Lord, we thank you and we give you thanks. In Christ, let me pray. Amen. Let's worship together. sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you lay down your life that I would be you've done for me. I'm going to sing this out. Who brings? Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice. Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. Yeah. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. Oh. That you would bear my cross.
there's nothing worth more that would ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love, where my heart becomes free and my shame is un. Your presence, Lord. Sing, Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is one.
is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord Amen let's go ahead and greet one another in the name of our Lord this morning Good morning good morning good morning church Good morning, Sharon. Good morning, Leslie. Good morning, Clark. Good morning, Ken. Um, good morning to all you that are watching this online this snowy, wet, uh, windy, snowy morning. Um, we're glad you've joined us. I want to thank these three guys, men and Josh Stam and Bill Swisher, for being here uh, this morning to lead us in worship. Um, and we're just glad you've tuned in if you're watching this online. If you, if you are watching online, welcome. And we would ask that you um, click the link below the video for online registration. Let us know that you're with us this morning and um, go ahead and leave us a comment if you'd like. That would be awesome and we know you're with us that way. Um, as we prepare for a time of offering this morning, uh, I want to talk to you just a minute about a ministry in the church that is so vital that people don't think of unless it messes up. Um, and that is our worship tech and people don't realize what's going on behind the scenes until something doesn't work and then they're yelling at everybody. Um, since the day that we put microphones in worship, we have needed a worship tech team. Um, so we have one and it keeps expanding. Then with the, with the pandemic, we, we had to learn how to go online and how to live stream. And that team keeps getting bigger and bigger and the needs keep getting more and more. And we, we just want to, um, we want to thank all of those who volunteer so diligently and committed every single week running our cameras, our sound, our, our um, presentation here in-house and on the screen and keeps our live stream going. Um, but we need, they need help. They can't do it every single week, 52 weeks of the year. So we need more folks um, to step up and uh, volunteer to join our worship tech team. Um, if you're good with a camera, you like taking video, you like... Um, doing uh, stuff, live stream type videos, we, we need you. Um, sound, we, if you want to learn how to do sound, we need you. Um, Ken Willie, I'm sure, would love to have somebody up top with him doing presentation so um, he could take a nap one day. Um, I don't know. Um, but we need folks. So if this is, if this is a, um, a thing that you might be interested in, we ask you to, to get hold of, of us. If, if you're watching and you think you may want to help in, in the sanctuary, um, contact David Daniel. If, if you want to think you may want to help back here in contemporary, contact either Min Lee or I, and we'll get, with, we'll get you plugged in and trained and, and ready to go. And I think that it is, uh, there are no coinky dinkies. I don't believe in coincidence at all. Um, and men's message this morning, and I hope you'll listen, is going to be on spiritual gifts and how we are all gifted with talents. And we are given those by God for the common good of the body of Christ. Um, so if those are some gifts you have, we need your gifts and talents for the good of the body of Christ here at Duluth First Methodist Church. So let us know. We'll plug you in. Get you going. Um, so now um, I, would, I would ask you, if you're online, you can uh, get, go to our website, DuluthUMC.org, click on the link and give online. Um, if you're here this morning, the basket's in the back on your way out. Um, but let's prepare our hearts and our minds for a time of giving, if you would join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we just thank you as we come before you this morning with, with our gifts, our, our act of worship through our giving. And we just thank you for the team of worship techs and all those who help in every other ministry and program here in the church. And Lord, we just ask that you bless each giver this morning and that you would bless each gift for the expansion of your kingdom here on earth in the here and the now in ways that we can't even dream of. So Lord, accept our gifts and bless each one of us. In the name of your precious son, amen. And as we prepare for a time of, of pastoral prayer, um, I would ask, are there any prayer concerns from those that are with us this morning? I do want to raise anybody traveling today with the, the weather that's um, fixing to come. And I know Bill Swisher's from Ohio, Clark Brain's from Virginia. They're like, yeah, this is nothing. Um, but for us Southerners, we don't do this very well. So... Um, I pray for all those that, that are out traveling today and those that have lost power already today, 
um, and hope that gets back up soon. I do want to raise up the Montgomery family, Mike and Kay Montgomery, in the death of their son-in-law, Kyle Wynn's husband, um, Wynn, Mike and Kay's daughter, um, in an accident Friday. And Mike has sent information that uh, there will be visitation at Bill Head Funeral Home Tuesday evening from 6 to 8, and then on Wednesday afternoon from 1 to 3. And then there will be a private uh, graveside service. And Wynn um, has said that she would want a memorial celebration of life service for Kyle, but that will be later on down the road. So we will keep you up to date on that. But be with Mike and Kay and Wynn and Kyle's family, everybody involved in this tragedy. So um, just keep them in your prayers. Any others this morning? Let's pray. Gracious God, we just raise all these concerns up to you this morning. Um, the, the weather, as beautiful as it is, it does bring um, some obstacles. And we would just ask anybody driving, traveling, whatever they're doing, that they would do it safely this morning. And Lord, we ask you to be with uh, Mike and Kay Montgomery this morning and win the whole family, both sides of the family, and the loss of Kyle. Would you hold this family let them feel your loving embrace and may you give them peace and comfort as they walk these days of grief and mourning with you and may they know that you are with them every step of the way and every breath may they feel your love and may you walk them through this Lord we thank you for all that you've given us and all that you continue to give us and we pray all of this, Lord, in the name of your precious and your holy son, Jesus. Amen. Now it's done. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. So good to see everyone this morning. And thank you guys so much for worshiping with us once again on this cold and snowy day. But it is beautiful out there. So I hope as you uh, go back home on your way home that you'll enjoy it, that you'll get home safely, and, and that you'll be able to enjoy this uh, time with your family and your loved ones as well. Um, and also I'd like to go ahead and extend a warm welcome to our online viewers as well. Um, thank you for joining us for our online worship service uh, here at the First United Methodist Church. Um, in case we haven't met, my name is Min Lee and I serve here and I have the privilege and the honor of serving here at the First United Methodist Church as the Director of Contemporary Worship Music and also as the Associate Director of Youth Ministries. I know that was really long, but I have the honor and the privilege of serving here and very uh, grateful for that. And uh, we've been on a sermon series called Proclamation. And um, uh, Reverend David Burchett um, kicked us off a couple Sundays ago. So I'm excited to share the word of God with you as we continue with the sermon series today. But before we do so, would you join me in a word of prayer once, uh, once again? And uh, let's ask the Holy Spirit to prepare our hearts uh, to receive his word this morning. Let's pray. Gracious God, we come before you. We humbly come before you this morning, and we are just so uh, blessed and honored uh, to be able to uh, dive into your word together as a faith community, Lord. So, Lord, we ask that, that your spirit will open up our hearts, that you will speak to us as you meet us in a personal way, in a powerful and mighty way through your word. And may there continuously be a transformation taking place in each and every one of our hearts and each and every one of our lives. And especially as we talk about spiritual gifts, the ways that you have gifted each and every member of the body of Christ. Lord, would you speak to us? And would you encourage us and empower us so that we may be participants in your kingdom work? We thank you in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, um, as we get started and uh, as we uh, journey through this message this morning, I want to begin by asking uh, everyone a question. 
Okay, I want to um, ask a question. How many of us have ever received a gift? Okay, um, it was Christmas not too long ago, but how many of us have ever received a gift that you were thankful to receive? But if you're really being honest with yourself, you weren't really sure what to do with them. Have you been there before? <laughs> Some of us are nodding, nodding our heads, right? You know, well, if you've ever felt that way, um, I want to reassure you that you're not alone, right? I, I, I've been there. I've received a few gifts from my mom. Sorry, mom. But I really did not know what I, what I um, could do or what I needed to do with the gifts that she gave me. But I love her. So um, I hope you're watching, mom, too. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, so I decided to look online and I found a list called the worst Christmas gifts, right? Um, and it was an incredibly long list um, uh, of gifts. So I selected just a few of them from the list and the reactions of the recipients. Okay, so here, here's, what, here's what it said on the list. Um, one of them said, a spam calendar. 12 months of pictures of spam. And guess what? I was a 14-year-old girl. I didn't know what to do with my face when I opened it. Right? Have you guys ever received that before? <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever even seen that before, a spam calendar. Um, how about this one, a dish towel? Okay, not bad, right? Not bad. I was eight years old, all right? A uh, ceramic jar for, for holding dog treats when I was 15, and, and this made me kind of sad, when we had just given them away, right? <laughs> um, that, that's, that's, that's sad. And, and whoever this person uh, was wrote, Miss You Rascal, right? So that's heartbreaking. And here's the last one I wanted to share. When I was eight or nine, my grandma gave me a Christmas ornament. It was a little stuffed cherub with pink cheeks and yarn hair. But I cried because I had saved up my allowance to buy it for her the year before. Talk about regifting, <laughs> right? I mean, that is just heartbreaking. Um, but, you know, sometimes we receive gifts that we are, we're not really sure as to what to do with them. So we end up uh, just storing them away in the closet or, or in the garage somewhere where after a while we can't even find them, right, where we've put them. And they just collect dust without them ever being used. Right? Well, it's not just things like Christmas gifts that, um, that we store away and, and they end up just sitting there collecting dust without them ever being used. But at times, we also, we also tend to store away our spiritual gifts and not put them to use. And there may be numerous reasons as to why that happens, which we're going to be talking about uh, later, a bit later in the message. But as we continue uh, with our series, we're going to talk about spiritual gifts and what scripture has to offer and what it has to say to us about it. So in doing so, we're going to dive into 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11 together. But before we do that, let me give us a little bit of a context as to where we find ourselves so we have a better understanding of where, um, um, what, what's actually happening here in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians. So now the first century church in Corinth was a super dysfunctional church, right? It was a super dysfunctional church caused by a lot of divisions uh, in beliefs and practices of the Christian faith, right? And among many other things, disunity in the church also, it greatly affected corporate worship, right? So within all these differences and this unity in the body of Christ in Corinth, there, um, it also started to affect their corporate worship. And just before chapter 12, the apostle Paul had been addressing um, uh, the Corinthians regarding debates on head coverings in worship, and also correcting the abuse that was taking place during the Lord's Supper. Now, it's evident if we look in the passage that, and throughout uh, 1 Corinthians, that Paul wanted the Corinthians to be well informed and also be corrected. So these matters would not cause any divisions within the body and division in the corporate worship. So that's the context that we find ourselves in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, as Paul leads into the topic of spiritual gifts. And here's what he says, starting with verse 1. Concerning spiritual gifts, now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. From the very beginning, we see that Paul's goal for what he's about to say to the Corinthians is very clear. 
as he is responding to an issue that was brought to his attention regarding spiritual gifts. He wanted to inform and correct the matters regarding spiritual gifts that were creating division for the body of, uh, body of Christ in Corinth. And verse 2 continues like this. It says, you know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led us straight to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. You see, Paul makes a reference to the Gentile lifestyle of the believers of Corinth here, having participated in pagan worship in the past. There probably were some concerns or confusion and, and differences in understanding uh, and, and, and beliefs regarding the work that the Holy Spirit was doing through the believers. So Paul goes on to say and makes it known, to the, uh, known of the indicators of those who are genuine believers and are exercising their spiritual gifts accordingly when he says that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is cursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Having said that, Paul begins to dig deeper about spiritual gifts. Verse 4 it says, there are different kinds of gifts but the same spirit dis, uh, distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in, every, in, in everyone, it is the same God at work. So in other words, there is a variety of gifts, but all are from the same source. Now, Paul makes a Trinitarian reference here, the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus, and God the Father, as he teaches on the importance of knowing that even though there are all these variety of uh, spiritual gifts, different gifts, that all of, our, all of them are from God. Now, Paul then leads into a discussion as to why these gifts are distributed to each member of the body of Christ. And he also goes on to list out some of these spiritual gifts. Verse 7 says, Now to each one of the one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another miraculous powers. To another prophecy. To another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of the one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Now, the list that we find here in 1 Corinthians, it's not an exhaustive list of all the spiritual gifts. There are other passages in Scripture, for example, Romans uh, chapter 12 and Ephesians chapter 4, that list out other spiritual gifts that are given to believers. But, you see, different gifts are given to different people, but there's unity. There's unity in the reason as to why these gifts are given. And Paul makes that very clear. He says, contrary to how these gifts were being used by the Corinthians at that time, all these different gifts were uh, not distributed to different people to be used for selfish ambitions. And they were not to be used to compete to see who had the greater gift. Instead, Paul, Paul shares with us that spiritual gifts are distributed by the Holy Spirit to each believer for the common good based on the needs of the body of Christ. So after listing out different spiritual gifts, Paul uh, ties in everything together in verse 11. Paul reemphasizes that the point that, uh, that regardless of what spiritual gift each person has, there's only one source that these gifts come from, and the Holy Spirit has distributed them based on his understanding of the needs of the body of Christ. You see, God knows God knows us so intimately and he knows the body of Christ in such an intimate way that he gives the body of Christ what it needs to build each other up. God doesn't have to play the guessing game or give gifts by chance and tell himself, oh, I guess that worked, right? He doesn't have to do that because he knows each and every one of the members of the body of Christ in such an intimate way. He gives us these gifts from his intimate knowledge of who he deems as his own then what's our response to what we have just talked about? Here's what I want to share with you. We are to faithfully exercise the spiritual gifts we have been given for the common good of the body of Christ. 
Let me say that again. We are to faithfully exercise the spiritual gifts we have been given for the common good of the body of Christ. And I think this is so important because there are times when these spiritual gifts are, are, that are given to each member of the body of Christ are not put to use or they may be misused. Instead of accomplishing its purposes and, and, and of being used for the common good and building up the body of Christ, they're stored away and neatly stored away and are not used for the purpose of fulfilling one's selfish ambitions. And there are many reasons as to why these spiritual gifts are stored away and not used or are used for, uh, are misused. You know, some of us may not use our spiritual gifts because we may not necessarily know what spiritual gifts we have been given. There perhaps was never a time when, that the believer went through the process of discerning one's uh, spiritual gifts. Or it could be that some of us compare our spiritual gifts to others and feel that our, our gifts that we have aren't that important. And you tell yourself, well, what, what can I really do with this gift? It seems so small. It seems so as if this is not an important gift. So what is it that I can do for the body of Christ? So what we tend to do is we shy away from use, using those gifts for the common good. And some may use their spiritual gifts to benefit oneself and for one's own glory instead of using them for God's intended purposes. But the truth is that our rightful response to the spiritual gifts that have been distributed by the Holy Spirit uh, to each and every one of us is for us to faithfully exercise those gifts that we have been given for the common good of the body of Christ. Because we all have a part to play in the body of Christ. Now then, I want to talk about how do we faithfully exercise um, the spiritual gifts that we have been given. And here are some questions that I would like to encourage all of us to ask ourselves. First is this, what spiritual gifts have I been given? Okay. What spiritual gifts have I been given? Because in order for us to faithfully exercise the spiritual gifts that we've been given, we have to know what they are, Right? Um, it's possible that a believer can use these gifts without knowing that they actually have been give, given such gifts. However, it's important for us to prayerfully discern what gifts we have been given so that we can use them faithfully. So if it's the case that you've never thought about the spiritual gifts you've been given, there are ways for you to be able to find them out. There are spiritual gift assessments that you can take and you can lean, also lean into your faith community to discern together because there are definitely times that others are able to see something that you may not be able to see about your spiritual gifts. Second question I want to encourage all of us to ask is this, in what ways have I been called to faithfully exercise the spiritual gifts that I have been given? Once you've discerned what your spiritual gifts are, looking for areas uh, in the body of Christ to serve is so important because what good is it if we only have these gifts, but if we're not using them. There are numerous spiritual gifts, which means that there are numerous areas in the body of, the church, uh, body of Christ that you can participate in, in using those gifts that you've been uniquely equipped with. And thirdly, what, what's stopping me from using those spiritual gifts for the common good? Right? What's stopping me from using these spiritual gifts for the common good? It's also important for us to be honest with ourselves because oftentimes I think we can uh, kind of lie to ourselves but make ourselves to believe that, you know, everything's, you know, we're doing everything that we can for the body of Christ and that we're utilizing all the gifts that we have to serve the, king, uh, to serve the body of Christ. So I, I think being honest regarding this question is so critical. But what are, the, what are some of the things that may have been hindering you from using these spiritual gifts that God has given you and participating in what God wants to do in us and through us for the body of Christ. And I think sometimes it has to do with feeling like not having enough time to put another thing on our plate when we already feel overwhelmed and with all that's going on in our lives. Do you ever feel that way? There's, you just feel like there's just so much on your plate and you're just like, I can't find any more time or any space for me to be able to do add, add anything else to my plate, right? I, I think we've all been there. Sometimes it has to do with constantly feeling like there's nothing that we can offer. Sometimes it has to do with not having found the areas of ministry where you feel called 
to use your gifts to serve the body of Christ. So what is it that has hindered you in the past or is currently stopping you from using your spiritual gifts to serve others, to build up the body of Christ? Let me go ahead and wrap up um, today's message with this. In case you were wondering what this was, there's a purpose behind this. And I'm going to turn it around. Do any of you guys like working on puzzles? Any of you guys good at it? Okay. <laughs> if you are, <laughs> a blessing to you. Because for me, um, I, I put this together last night, by the way, and, and, and honest talk, right? It, it took me quite a long time. And it's not like one of those like 1,000 pieces where you spend days and days and days and working on it. But it's about 48 pieces that go into it, right? And, and I had the picture out there laid out and I, and I started uh, working on this uh, last night. And I thought to myself, I should have done this earlier, right? Because it was taking that long. But here it is. I got it done and I came in the morning and I dropped it on the floor and then everything went splat, right? Splat. So like I had to redo it this morning, to be honest, right? But there, there's a point that I want to make with this. Um, and we have uh, our, our Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse and, and friends over here. But I, I think it will work. Um, you know, just like this puzzle piece that I'm holding on to right now in the body of Christ, there's a specific place and role that's specifically intended for you to participate in, to exercise your gifts, to complete God's intended purposes. There's something that the body of Christ needs from each and every one of us, from you, uh, that, that God has created you, equipped you, and given you the, spirit, uh, the, the spiritual gifts for. So then, brothers and sisters, we have been called to faithfully exercise the spiritual gifts that we have been given for the common good of the body of Christ. Then I want to encourage us, may we respond, then respond by participating in the work that God is doing in us, around us, and through us, because we all have a part to play in the body of Christ. Join me in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for you have given each and every one of us gifts, Lord, according to your perfect knowledge, according to the needs of the body of Christ. Lord, whatever may be hindering us, and stopping us from being able to use these spiritual gifts, Lord, we ask that you would help us, that you would encourage us, that you would empower us so that we don't store away these spiritual gifts that you have blessed us with, but so that we may be active participants in the body of Christ as we edify one another, as we build each other up so that the world may see your love shining through your church. We thank you for your precious word once again. Christ, let me pray. Amen. Thank you, man. What a wonderful message this morning. Um, and we give the band time to get up and, and prepare for our closing song this morning. Um, I want to thank, uh, and neglected to do this earlier, I want to thank uh, Pastor C.K. Fuino for filling in for me last week. It was kind of late notice. Um, we had a we had a COVID exposure at my home, so I needed to be home last weekend. And CK at the very last moment uh, agreed to fill in, so I want to thank CK for we know for that last week. Um, and watched online, and everything went swimmingly without me. So maybe I don't have to be here every summer, right? Right, Clark? Um, you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, before we have our closing song um, this morning, I want to ask those that have been, I don't need to do it for those that are here because they're all members already, but um, for those that have been watching online and that may have been visiting with us online, if you would like to make Duluth First United Methodist Church your church home, make this your body of Christ, and we would invite you to um, get in touch with Beth Shugart, Reverend Beth Shugart, um, here at the church, and she can make sure that happens. Um, and I apologize for not having her information up on the screen with the, the snow and everything this morning. We don't have any body back running um, graphics. So, um, but you can call the church office at 
3776. Did I get the number right, Ken? Sweet. Um, extension 128 is best number, so you can call that and she'll make sure that happens. Now, if you would, join us as we sing our closing hymn this morning. song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever bring Live for you Jesus the name of us every other name Jesus the only one who could ever sing worthy of every breath we could ever breathe live for you live for you and oh
please go ahead and grab a seat for a moment. Um, I'm going to go ahead and highlight a few things that are happening in the life of our church. Uh, first of all, Worship for Women originally scheduled um, for, uh, for Saturday, January 29th, um, has been rescheduled to Saturday, March 19th. Um, additional information will be made available soon, so please be on the lookout for that. Um, Learn the Little classes are one-night classes for adults and offered on Wednesday nights from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And they cover a, a wide variety of subjects, highlighting the talent and the expertise of our members and staff. Um, so the, the January 19th, 19th uh, Learn the Little class features the timeline created by Sarah Burns and the Fellowship Hall. And last but not least, please note that registration for um, Christian Beginnings start January 21st. And uh, for more details and to read about many more exciting things that are happening in the life of our church, um, please check our Sunday uh, supplement newsletter or visit us on our website, DuluthUMC.org. Uh, um, please rise uh, as you're able and receive the benediction. As we go forth from this place, may we be a testimony of the Holy Spirit working in us, around us, and through us. May we faithfully use the spiritual gifts as the Holy Spirit enables us to love and serve one another and build up the body of Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thanks so much for worshiping with us, and uh, please be safe out there, and uh, have a blessed week, everyone.